Well, old chaps, it's day two. It's not a particularly nice day for sailing, but the female wants to leave. What the female wants, the female gets. That's a rule I suggest you adopt if you want to live a comfortable life. So, in the torrential rain and the 30-foot waves, as you can see, we're off to discover new places. Places no one has ever been before, except the people on the beach and those people on those boats over there. But never mind them. This is about us. Off we go. Wish us luck. Okay, it's the first day in Puerto Lopez. We're gonna go into the market and get some fruits and vegetables. This is our buddy Angel, he's helping us out, and uh, he's a cool guy. He was watching our boat last night, and he made sure we got into the dinghy, uh, into the back to the sailboat okay. Super, super cool dude. We're gonna talk to him real quick. Hola, mano! Oh, yeah. Bien, gracias. Hey, ¿tienes una manguera en la, en la muelle o no? Manguera. Manguera, porque necesito un poco de agua. We'll see. I'll give it right back to you guys. I made it into shore, you can see the boats out there. I'm in here. This is the fish market in Puerto Lopez. In the morning there was a whole bunch of people here. But right now it's, uh, it's kind of winding down. But this guy's chopping up a big swordfish right here. This is a cool fish. from all night and they land their boats over here and then they bring their haul over here to get weighed and paid for it by the fish market people so it's a really good system there's so many fishermen here this is where most of the fish in Ecuador comes from and there's a load I mean they're catching swordfish that are several hundred pounds and I've seen at least three or four of them plus anything you want squid this guy over here has a bunch of squid scored there I got a whole bag I mean this is like at least 10 pounds of fruits and vegetables for five bucks and then I got some strawberries and some grapes that were another three for not very much but those are always expensive because they go bad quickly this place is cool it's not too expensive it looks like it's really thriving during the day I mean they're pulling in some massive swordfish I wish I had a smoker on board I'd buy some but not yet I'm planning on building one though. Cool. Well, Puerto Lopez, this was a great stop. Uh, we're gonna come back here, but we're gonna go to the island for a few days, so watch out. So we 
just left Puerto Lopez. I really liked it there. It was super cool. Everybody was really nice. Uh, everything was cheap. I got a big bag of vegetables for nothing, and we're off. Now we're going to Isla Salango. Salengo. It's either Salango or Salengo. Salango. Salango. It's about uh, five miles south of Puerto Lopez. And we're gonna go chill out there, finish the next episode. It'll just give us a chance to get in the water and do some water sports again. We really like being underwater. We're gonna try to get some really good underwater shots of Kimmy spearfishing so we can upload it and work on the Instagram and try to get her a set of carbon fins because she really likes my fins. So hopefully we can work on a sponsorship deal with that. So come with us to Isla Salongo, it's gonna be fun. By the way, Captain, how's your rig holding up? It's good, but it's leaning to the left, so I'm gonna have to tune it. But right now, it's really strong. It's almost there. It's almost, it's almost all stretched out. It's just a lot of Dyneema to stretch. I'm also gonna add some spacers and washers up on the top. One of our fans sent me an email that said that I'm gonna have a problem because the pin is a little smaller than the hole at the top of the mast. So what I'm gonna do is shim it with, with some washers so it's directly flat against, perpendicular with the hole. Because if, we, if you have that oh. thing go in there and it's at an angle, it'll, it'll end up wearing it weird. But if it's straight, it'll be fine. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add washers to the, the um, bolt so it'll, it'll be straight perpendicular in the hole. But it's nice, somebody sent you an email. Yeah, super nice. They even took a picture from a screenshot of their computer, they paused the movie, took a screenshot, blew it up, and circled it, and then put in like little quotations, you're gonna have a problem here, I would change oh, no, it. It was so super nice. sweet, yeah. People are like watching out for us. They want us to succeed, which is, I'm, I mean, we've got so many people gunning for us, it's pretty cool. Dude, you, we would have had problems with the rig, you think, if Kraken would have had, wouldn't have contacted us? Yeah, I think that point load, I mean, had we had like really big seas and they were shock loading the mass, it definitely could have broken. I, I, I don't want to be metal, melodramatic about it, but literally, yes. That, that, normally I wouldn't say that, but this is an, an instance where it could, we could have lost the mast. If we lost the wrong stay. Thanks, Luke. So we made it to Isla Salango, and as promised, James is going to jump in now and catch me a fish, but I think there's trouble coming right now. He was about to get in. Hola. Hi. Hi. Careful with the rudder. Maybe we should let it down. No, it's okay. They're not gonna. They're not gonna hit us. Just keep an eye on it. Okay. So you're gonna get in, babe? Yeah. I don't know what they're tying to us to us for, but it's just easier for them to tie to us than to get a mooring, I guess. Hey, but if they hit the rudder, I told you so. You want to put it down? Yeah. Look, 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 they're coming already for it. For it. Go ahead, yeah, go ahead and put it down. Can you pull? Yeah, I'll do it. Okay. Give him more line, he says. Tiene nada más. So we just sailed up from Puerto Lopez. We heard the nicest beach in Ecuador is supposed to be right around the corner, so we went. And this is what we got so far. The bartender told me this is the nicest beach in Ecuador. We went to a bar, the only bar we've been to in Ecuador, by the way. And it was owned by a French guy with a red beard. And the man with the red beard said to go 20 clicks north. I see people here, so this beach is accessible. That one is not. That one could be our private little beach. Yeah, this is nice. I, I want to check out that island, man. I wish we had a dinghy. Dude, we could, we could park right there on that beach, right in that protected little cove right there, and then dinghy over to that big island, check out the cave, check out the, the fish, do some spear fishing. Why don't we have the dinghy? We don't have a dinghy because I killed our motor, finally. And we don't have any more motor. So we're kind of just flying around using the big boat as the dinghy. It's 10 feet of water, about 100 yards from the beach. 10 feet of water? Yeah, this is a good spot. 
I'm letting out um, 10 to 1 scope <laughs> just because I can. And, uh, Isn't it even 15? No, it's 10 to 1. somewhere so we're gonna go over to those rocks and see if it's any good visibility I'll jump in here and see if I can see the bottom and if I have any viz this should be pretty similar over there if it sucks let's go I don't really like hanging out on beaches but if I can spearfish and go up to that little tower up there that'd be fun we're doing 7.7 knots on our way to Salinas. We had to pull up anchor last night because there was waves breaking behind us because I went over this like little shelf when I went to anchor in that beach. And as the tide went down and the surf came up, the waves started breaking behind us and it kind of scared us. So we were like, ah! We, let, we raised the anchor, got the hell out of there. Found a mooring ball, we're on the mooring ball until like 5.30 and then we left about six to go to Salinas, which is like uh, the, it's the southernmost city except for Guayaquil in Ecuador. That's just the way it goes in sailing, especially on a cat. I can usually get through about 100 degrees, 90 if I'm really lucky, but that's it. And then I just went through 140, probably because there's a the Humboldt current's coming through and it's probably whipping around that point and kind of hitting us in the face now. So there's probably a current here. That's all I can think of. But we're doing seven, eight knots, so no matter how we attack, we're still gonna get there before dark, hopefully. Oh, Captain, you've saved us. You've gotten us there safely. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. There was big waves and the sea was very mean and the, the torrential downpouring. It was very scary. And the Captain, he's so sexy. He just, he just handled everything so, so magnificently. The Captain is very sexy. So, we are here safely now, we are on anchor, there's nobody around. We went through very, very difficult seas. What did the sexy captain say? Tumultuous. Oh, I love this bird. <laughs> Tumultuous seas. <laughs> <laughs> They're <eat> living this. <laughs>